RPE stands for Rate of Perceived Exertion. Mike Tuchere describes it as an evaluation of performance. RPE training uses a numerical scale of 1 through 10, 1 being the easiest, 10 being maximum. Really, the scale is just 6 through 10. Anything below RPE 6 represents an effort that would be considered a light warm-up, and at that point, you're better off just using percentages. For example, do 5 reps with 50%. RPE is a useful way to gauge intensity, which refers to a percentage of your 1 rep max. But unlike set in stone, percentage-based programs, RPE training is flexible. RPE 10 is a true max. You could not do one more rep. RPE 9 means you could do one more rep. RPE 8 means you could do two more reps. RPE 7 means you could do three more reps. In my opinion, RPE is the most useful method of tracking effort. It accounts for training fatigue from day to day and week to week and even within a single session. Percentage-based training can be highly flawed because you are basing your training weight off of a one rep max that you set how long ago? Two, three, four or more months ago? After a stressful month of training, you are probably not peaked like you were when you set that one rep max months ago. If you're performing competition squat for six sets of five reps and then competition bench press for another six sets of five reps, by the time you get to your pause deadlifts, they're going to be a lot tougher than they would be if you were to perform them when you were fresh. And that 70% work feels more like 80%. But an RP8 is always an RP8 because it lets us know at exactly what intensity these pause deadlifts should be at. Percentage-based programs also make weight selection for assistance exercises very difficult. Most of us don't know our close grip bench max or our beltless pause squat max so to prescribe a set percentage off of your competition lift is not optimal and it can be highly inaccurate. As a power lifter, handling circa max singles leading up to a meet should be included in your training. It's a skill that needs to be practiced. And exposure to heavy singles will make you better at handling heavy singles. Performing singles at a given RPE allows you to track your progress, kind of like a check-in. You can see which singles are trending up. It can also be used to establish an estimated one rep max for that particular day, and subsequent sets can be based off of that single. I suppose you could include percentage-based singles into your program, but I still think that performing singles using the RPE scale is a much better option. People initially think that RPE-based training only accounts for bad days, meaning I'm not feeling that good today, I'm gonna take it easy. That's not the case. It can also swing the other way taking advantage of good days, just like I explained with my successful PRs during my last training cycle. But RPE is not this emotional cop-out excuse to take it easy in the gym. How many more reps could you have done? Not how many more reps do you wish you could do? How many more reps? And lastly, RPE training is not completely subjective like a lot of people assume it is. I'll admit, RPE training is not perfect because there's really no way of finding out whether you actually had two reps or three reps left in the tank, but that's okay, just do your best. Use your best judgment. But percentage-based training is not perfect either for the reasons I mentioned in this video. And I'm not trying to make the argument that percentage-based training doesn't work, I actually use percentages in my own program because it's based off of this top single that I did on this particular day, not on a single that I did four months ago. Now, RPE is not for everyone. If you're a lazy person who's like a cancer in the gym, you are probably better off following a percentage-based program. Dang, man, I'm just not feeling it today. If you tend to be a bit overconfident, dang, call it 7.5. You might be a little too reckless with RPE training. And lastly, if you're a novice, you don't need to worry about RPE training. I always suggest following linear progression and just adding five pounds each session for as long as you can until that stops working. But that doesn't mean you can't start learning RPE. I have my clients who are on linear progression rate each set of five reps using the RPE scale. After the first set, I'll ask them, how many more do you think you could have done? What would you rate that? This gives them time to practice judging RPE. And finally, wrapping up, it shows you a one through 10 rep RPE combination and its corresponding percentage. For example, one rep at RPE 10 is 100% of your one rep max. 
RP10 means you can do no more reps. Should be pretty easy to understand. Five reps at RPE8 is usually 81% of your one rep max. When you see a 0.5 value, that indicates a maybe. So RPE8 means you could definitely do two more reps. RPE 8.5 means you could definitely do one more, maybe two more. The lower your repetition number, the more accurately you can estimate your one rep max. Okay, so we are going to do some math. This is all gonna make sense if you have at least half a brain. If you've graduated from the fourth grade, this should all make perfect sense. If you are currently in the third grade, come back next year, dude. Anyone who comments down below about how this is too much math, it's too complicated, you have less than a half a brain. If I only had a brain. And I would suggest going to find the coloring book explaining RPE, or you can watch the video that I linked down in the description area of this video. He is currently doing three sets of five reps with 275 pounds. I would have him rate his first set of squats using the RPE scale. If he has completed all three sets of five reps, his first set is not at RPE 10 because he's able to repeat it for two more sets. Now, if he failed his second set of five, his first set very well could be 275 for five reps at RPE 10. But let's say Adam Paul is finishing all reps and he's pushing himself pretty hard. And for example, we'll say his first set was 275 times five at nine, second set times five at nine, and his final set was at 10. Chart, five reps at RP9 equals about 84% of your one rep max. So if we do some math, Adam Paul did 275, that was the weight, 275 equals 84% of X, of what number? We're gonna divide both sides by 0.84, which is the number for 84%, equals an estimated one rep max of 327 pounds, which we'll call 325. There are one rep max calculators online that you could use, but I'm not sure how accurate they are. I would suggest using the percentages found in the Bridge ebook. Now that we know Adam Paul's estimated one rep max is 325 pounds for the squat, generally speaking, one RPE equals about 5%. So if we knew that Adam Paul's five reps at RPE was 265, if we went to five reps at nine, up one RPE, we would just add 5% to 265. 265 times 1.05 equals 278. If we wanted to go down an RPE from eight to seven, we would subtract 5%. So 265 times 0.95 equals about 250. If you have to do five sets of five, all at RP eight, and you do five at eight, five at eight, whoops, five at nine, do not just stop the workout there. Or are you legitimately too tired to complete this, in which case you have to drop the weight. Let's say you do five reps at eight, and then for some reason this next set feels even better at seven. It still counts. That's your second set, move on to the next one. If it was too easy, or if it was under RPE, then you probably should add some weight. Uh, should I just drop the RPE for next week's workouts? No, RPE is all relative, right? So an RP8 is the same on a good day as it is on a bad day. Dude, thanks for watching. I hope that cleared up any questions you guys had. I would suggest going over to the Barbell Medicine website, downloading the free ebook, The Bridge. Until next time, always remember, tread on time. Uh...